It's Wednesday, February 9th, and the time for your Bobby Destiny Morning News update. Government is doing the right thing in amending the 55 year old Barbados Constitution to change the qualifications for membership in both houses of Parliament. That's according to Prime Minister Mia Motley, who also insisted that her government was correcting a wrong by reducing the age for eligibility to sit in Parliament to 18 and giving a voice to the opposition by allowing them to recommend appointments to the Senate even when they hold no seats in the House of Assembly. The Prime Minister made the comments on Tuesday as she addressed the lower house, which is void of opposition members, after her Barbados Labour Party won all 30 seats in the January 19 general election. And I believe that if we want our young people to be agents of fairness, if we want our people in a society not to discriminate against each other, then the two principles that these constitutional amendments speak to are vital. Non-discrimination on the basis of age and inclusion on the basis of relevance and participation because the Democratic Labour Party and other political parties, even though they did not win the election, receive support from citizens of our nation and residents of our nation. And those citizens and residents have a right, in my view, in a restructured parliament and in a restructured Barbados, to have their voices heard. Prime Minister Motley is adamant that despite its heavy defeat at the polls, the DLP, which is the country's main opposition party, has a role to play in government and governance. The Democratic Labour Party is over 65 years old and has done well by this country during its life. I trust and pray that it will do well by this country in its future again. But what cannot happen is for us to ignore the reality that they have a role to play. If they choose not to play it, that is a matter for them. But I trust and pray that they will understand that this goes beyond the politics of the day and that this goes fundamentally to the strengthening of our democracy. I do not believe that any Prime Minister should have the right to choose all five members of the Electoral and Boundaries Commission. However, so constructive. I do not believe that we should ignore the requirements for the level of consultation across divides that would want us to have services commissions and other elected persons in our constitution to reflect that unity of purpose that we would want to see on affairs of a national state. Meanwhile, Deputy Prime Minister and Leader of Government Business in the House of Assembly, Sancia Bradshaw, said the Constitution Amendment Bill is to create opportunities for Barbadians. She maintained that the new legislation goes past giving a party the power to appoint two senators or allowing someone to serve in Parliament at the age of 18. That what we are really doing here um, is not uncharted waters, but rather it is really continuing what the Barbados Labour Party stands for and certainly what we as a government stand for. And it simply isn't just about amending the constitution just to make way for a young man to enter politics, or it's not simply about being able to um, give the opposition an opportunity to have a voice. I believe that this is, is very significant because it also speaks to the underlying philosophy of the Barbados Labour Party in being able to create opportunities for people to serve, to give people who ordinarily may not have a voice um, the opportunity to be heard. It allows us to be able to ensure that we, we preserve our democracy in a way that allows us, even though we have a 30-seat majority in this House, um, that we are able to still send a message that we are not pompous, we are not above ourselves, we don't feel that we know everything or that we um, can solve everything, but therefore that we are able to almost extend the olive branch to others to keep us on our toes and certainly to be that other voice sometimes that we need to hear um, in a chamber such as this 
as we proceed to, to make policy in the interests of, of the people. In other news, some teachers and ancillary staff are in favor of returning to the classrooms on February 21st. That's according to President of the National Union of Public Workers, Kimberly Agard. Agard said that the teachers represented by that union are ready to resume face-to-face -face classes at their respective schools, even with the high number of COVID-19 cases on the island. However, the NUPW president said while her members are anxious to get back to the classrooms, there were several concerns that they first wanted to be addressed, including ununiformed protocols across all of the island schools, better trained monitors, and adequate supplies. She made the comments following a five-hour virtual meeting on Tuesday with key stakeholders, including Education Minister Kay McCarney, Chief Education Officer Dr. Ramona Archer Bradshaw, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George, okay. and Head of the COVID-19 Monitoring Unit, Ronald Chapman, along with other union heads and adults. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. news from the region, health officials in Guyana say over 7,500 children have tested positive for COVID-19 in the country since March 2020, with 55 of them being hospitalized. Officials also revealed that 17 children have died from the, the virus. More from HGPTV Nightly News. Providing a breakdown of the COVID-19 cases on record in the country on Monday during his daily update was Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony, who highlighted that more than 7,000 children are on record as contracting the disease. Since the pandemic started uh, to now, 7,831 pediatric cases. Most of these cases have been mild, uh, so they don't require um, hospitalization, but unfortunately we've had 55 persons coming into the hospital and of these 55 persons we would have had 17 deaths. Over the past two weeks, Guyana has seen a massive decline in active cases, which now stand at 5,495. In December last, when the Omicron variant was first suspected by health authorities, active cases had peaked to 14,000. However, since the implementation of the new testing guidelines, lower daily case counts have become the norm again. The country has witnessed at least two major waves since the pandemic started, that of Delta and now Omicron. And finally, an estimated 13 million people in the Horn of Africa are facing severe hunger. That dire warning from the United Nations World Food Programme. Program spokesperson Thompson Fury said that the region is grappling with severe drought caused by the driest conditions since 1981. What is particularly striking about this drought is its breath. Livestock are dying, and that is devastating for pastoral families. Unable to find pasture, and with fodder out of reach of many, pastoralists have watched their livestock die. After three consecutive failed rainy seasons, harvests are up to 70% below the norm in affected areas. Now, food and water prices are skyrocketing significantly. This is affecting families' ability to buy. Staple cereal prices have risen between three to five-fold above typical levels in several markets. 
rising cereal prices and declining livestock prices means a sharp decline in the terms of trade. Meanwhile, Mohamed Malik Fall, who is the Regional Director for Eastern and Southern Africa United Nations Children Fund, revealed that malnutrition rates also remain high across the region and could worsen if no immediate action is taken. Right now, nearly 5.5 million children in these four countries are threatened by acute malnutrition and an estimate 1.4 million children by severe acute malnutrition. UNICEF fear that this number will increase by 50% if the rain don't come in the next three months. Families are tracking, are taking extreme measures to survive and in many cases leaving their home, which put children on the move at particular risk. This is a crisis that requires a collective response, ensuring access to clean water, nutrition and safe space for children. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.